before he went back to Bell Communications Research. And then in 92, he joined UCLA uh, as a chair professor. And in 2007, he joined uh, UC Berkeley again as a chair professor. Where he's currently the director of NSF Center for Energy Efficiency and Electronic Science. It's a multi university center. Uh, which of which Stanford is one of the participants? Stanford is one of the participants. More importantly, uh, the bug finally bit him. Maybe that's why he moved to Bay Area. In 2008, he and the Professor Harry Atwater founded what is known as Alpha Devices, which has uh, interesting scheme of making the principal gallium arsenide uh, uh, cells. Now, the thing I'm going to tell about him is Eli has this uncanny ability to take the most complex issue and explain it in the simplest possible terms so even people like me can understand it. <laughs> so, Eli. This is, you know, you know, you just heard, my explanations are so good that a Stanford professor could understand them. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'd like to hear it from the students rather than from the professors. But the folks in the back, uh, the, uh, I don't want you to stand. Uh, in fact, I don't think this talk is going to be good enough to be worth standing the entire time. So I urge you to go find a chair somewhere, and, and there seems to be a lot of room up here. So just get a chair and bring it in. <laughs> um, the um, uh, Professor Saraswat asked me to uh, sort of give a, a basic explanation of, uh, of photovoltaics. Actually, this talk is pretty similar to a talk I gave uh, here about 18 months ago. At uh, you had the, uh, the big energy colloquium or symposium. Can you raise your hand if you attended that one? So I apologize in advance that you'll hear some things that are pretty similar. And uh, so, uh, uh, I, uh, the, uh, well, maybe you want to hear it again. I don't know. Uh, the, um, so we've seen these solar panels. This is particularly noticeable in Germany. Uh, the, uh, they have uh, many, many rooftops covered in Germany. Uh, it's hard to find a barn that is not covered with solar panels. Of course, the reason is that the farmers get extra subsidies for uh, putting up solar panels. So that's. They put up extra barns, barns with no function other than to hold up the uh, panels. So they have tremendous subsidies. I think I have a, might have a slide on that. Uh, the, um, now you've heard that the volume has gone up this much, the uh, shipments, this is 2011, and then we're up in 2012, we were up uh, around that level over 25 gigawatts, that's a huge amount. And I remember, uh, as uh, Professor Saraswat told us, I used to work at Exxon, which had some pretensions. They actually had the biggest solar cell company in the world at that time. That was uh, years ago. And it had production of maybe 10 megawatts. And that was the biggest in the world. And you can see what, how things have changed. Now, I, uh, obviously, there have been tremendous improvements in the technology. But uh, most of this, I would say 90% of this growth is due to subsidies. Um, and maybe subsidies are needed to get an industry like this uh, started. Historically, big things have always required subsidies. Uh, for example, when they built the railroads across the United States, uh, those companies uh, uh, didn't do that well financially, and uh, they, uh, uh, they were subsidized. Uh, here, here's an interesting slide. Uh, this dates back to uh, May last year. And this is an indication of the subsidies in Germany. What has it accomplished? So this yellow part is um, uh, photovoltaics. So this is the daily cycle of ele electricity demand in Germany. And in this daily cycle, I've chosen some special days. First of all, I've chosen May. I'm trying to illustrate the big impact of solar. Now, if you want to get a big impact, you go when there's the most sunlight. So June actually has the most sunlight. So why are we in May? The reason is that the solar cell is a little thermodynamic engine. And uh, as, a, as a little engine like that, it uh, works better, like most thermodynamic engines, it works better when it's colder. Okay, So it's a little cooler in May than in June, and uh, so almost the same amount of sunlight. So 
the peak days were at the end of May. And uh, you see that it was truly a, a very, very large amount or fraction of the total electricity demand in Germany. There's a tiny bit of wind that day. And if you combine the solar and the wind, it was almost 50% uh, of the total energy generation. However, a little trick, warning to the consumer here, the day chosen was a Saturday. So Saturday, there's less demand for electricity, so the solar looks bigger in proportion. And so that's, but still, it's an amazing achievement. But uh, it's an achievement that was won at the expense of, um, of very heavy subsidies. Uh, in California, we have some similar uh, regulations coming in, so you can expect your electricity bill to go up to pay for uh, the solar that was mandated. So I'm not a big fan of these mandates or these subsidies, but it's there, and it's having a very big impact on the technology and on going down the uh, learning curve. Still, I think people are very surprised to see uh, that big an impact uh, from solar in a, not in a small place, Germany is, uh, is a huge country. Uh, are, are there actually no chairs out there? I feel very guilty uh, that I'm making you stand. Can you send some explorers to find some chairs? Okay. Here I'm trying to illustrate the learning curve. Actually, this, this is a graph which starts in 1985, which was actually after my time. Um, uh, my time was the early 80s. At that time, uh, the And uh, that was in, I think this is in current dollars. So it's actually been faster than that because the dollar has gone down. But you see here uh, tremendous improvements. These are not uh, just economies of scale. These are, well, maybe they're economies of scale, but they require technological innovation. So real progress was made. And I remember in 1980 listening to a Department of Energy talk predicting that by 1989, the price of solar panels would be between 50 cents and a dollar. Could reduce the price by over a factor 10 uh, and change nothing. Well, of course, they changed quite a few things. Uh, and they learned how to purify silicon very inexpensively. Uh, silicon itself is not very expensive. Uh, the crystal growth is not a major cost. It, it's very rapid. The, still, the, the most serious cost has to do with the purification. Uh, so it hasn't been a completely steady curve. You see here a bump that occurred a few years ago. And this bump is when the subsidies had kicked in, but there wasn't enough silicon capacity. So uh, the price of silicon went up, the price of the panels went up, but then it went down. And I see this graph kind of ends in 2011, just the Chinese subsidies kicked in. So where it went from uh, Germany having an installation subsidy uh, China was having a production subsidy, and and they are basically various provincial governments in China are subsidizing their solar factories, and as a result, uh, there has been a price war, and the price of solar panels has dropped to um, some would say sixty. of energy projection because the dollar has gone down by a factor of three over the 30 years. So it's, it's a tremendous uh, improvement. But part of it is due to the price war. In fact, uh, there, there are rumors that some panels, uh, maybe not the highest quality, are being sold for as little as uh, 50 cents a watt, which is pretty small. And projections are being... Oh, these are prices that were supposed to have happened by the early uh, 2020s. And they've happened now not because of technical, uh, but all this is in, is because of a learning curve, as well as these various glitches and various other uh, dislocations. And it's it's about a thirty times improvement uh, over these year, these years. And it this is uh, now it's projected close to hundred gigawatts installed. So it's it's, qu it's quite amazing. We're up around here, and it's it's expected that by twenty sixteen there'll be no subsidies uh, will no longer be needed. Well, in Europe, no subsidies are, are needed any longer because uh, China is subsidizing the production. So it's quite remarkable. And then the big question, what's going to happen in 2020? Even 2016, subsidies are no longer needed. I don't know how to take that. That's, that's kind of weird. Now, one of the most controversial aspects of solar panels 
is the what is the importance of efficiency versus uh, cost? And uh, many people have believed that efficiency is really the key thing because that'll bring down the cost. And here is sort of like the uh, cost model. I think it's a very sensible cost model. Uh, you're paying for the glass, you're paying for the frame, you're paying for installation, wiring, uh, fabrication, etc. You're paying for all that, and then you divide by efficiency. So it's obvious to me that to get a low cost, you need a high efficiency. People question that. And uh, they say that, uh, no, no, I have very inexpensive panels. Don't worry about the efficiency. So uh, they, there is this controversy that has been raging for at least 30 years. And I would say the people who are winning the argument so far are the people who say, don't worry about efficiency. And I find that to be uh, very strange and counterintuitive. So I have here, this was uh, uh, at least in January. This was in January. The market capitalization of First Solar. So First Solar is an inefficient company. It uses cat telluride. This is a material. This is not God's gift to solar cells. This does not perform that well. But 11% efficiency, and uh, the market says that company is worth 2.6 billion uh, dollars. Okay. On the other hand, you have a company uh, uh, here in the Bay Area, Sun Power, and it's founded by Professor Swanson. Used to be Professor Swanson here in uh, electrical engineering. Oh, he, you, go, you roped him into last week's lecture. OK. Uh, so did he complain that he wasn't getting enough respect? Because the market does not respect him as much. You see, uh, he has a way more efficient technology. 23, what did he say last week? Is he 23 and a half, 24? What did he say? 24. You see, so it's, it's pretty fantastic compared to First Solar, which does cadmium telluride. Yet the market says, oh, we're not impressed. Your company is worth less than a billion dollars. Okay, So this, this controversy, controversy has been raging. Uh, I'm an old friend of Dick Swanson, and I say he, he was right then, and he's right now. And eventually, uh, the world will catch on. And so, but nonetheless, you can't argue with Wall Street. And uh, so that's